Hello and welcome to the first video for Umami Eats. I'm so excited. So I thought I would start it off really simple and casual. We're going to do a vegetable video and I'm going to do a few things because I don't know what you like so I just want to make sure you're covered. We're going to start off with the existing spice blends just so that you can get a feel for the spice blends and basic cooking technique and then after about maybe three packages we'll get into the real stuff. So today we're going to make grilled zucchini, we're going to do some cauliflower steaks and we're going to do a jerk pumpkin soup. I say pumpkin but I love the sweetness of butternut squash so I always use butternut squash instead of pumpkin. So let's do this. So I've washed my zucchini and I'm just going to start by taking the ends off of the zucchini. Um, a smooth chef knife is what you want to use. Um, and then we're just going to slice it in about one inch, three quarters of an inch to one inch um, slices diagonally, like this, all the way down. And it doesn't have to be perfect, they'll, they'll cook just fine. Um, I just like how they look, diagonal. So. You need a grill pan for this recipe, but if you don't have a grill pan, you can either put them on a barbecue grill or you can just do them in a frying pan um, and it'll be fine. So for the cauliflower steaks, I've already taken some of the leaves off the bottom of the cauliflower and I'm gonna take this bit out now, but when you cut it, just be sure you don't go up too deep into the cauliflower because we're gonna be cutting the cauliflower vertically, vertically. <laughs> Um, and you want to have some support for so that it doesn't completely break apart. So I usually just try to cut like cut down into the cauliflower and don't go too deep and then just turn it around and cut down again and just turn it around and cut down again and then you can pull this piece out. So that makes it really easy. And sometimes, like if I want to get all of these pieces out in here, I'll just take a smaller knife um, so that I don't cut my finger off and just get these little bits out without cutting too far into the core. And if you don't get all the leaves out, it's fine because once you cut the cauliflower open, it'll be easy to get the leaves out anyway. So, just put my trash to the side. And then we're just gonna, I would say about a one inch thickness. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna cut, and see how it crumbles? That's fine, that's not gonna hurt the dish. I just hold the top while I'm cutting, just so that it has some support. And I'm just gonna lay these down so they're like little steaks. And I'm go gonna do that with the hood of the cauliflower. And I love cauliflower because it's so versatile. Um, you can season it with almost anything. You can do almost anything with it. Um, it's mild, but it's just so accepting and this is starting to fall apart but that's fine and you want to try to make sure the pieces are kind of like an even thickness some of them will break off and they won't be like see how that is a little bit thicker um, you can either leave it or just cut it off so that it's an even thickness and we're gonna lay this on a cookie sheet. I have a cookie sheet here that's lined with foil, just for easy cleanup. And I'm just thinking now, my cauliflower is so big, it might be too big for just one cookie sheet. But we're gonna line it with foil, and then we're gonna get it. Put my cauliflower on the pan. I put the big pieces on first, and then just sprinkle the little pieces around as they fit. I'm gonna drizzle it with olive oil. I use extra virgin olive oil to cook with mostly. I also use macadamia nut oil and grapeseed oil. 
Um, sometimes I use coconut oil, but I find with coconut oil, you have to be careful that that um, you don't mind the flavor. So I just find that um, it has a, you can taste it. Um, that probably looks like a lot of olive oil, but what I like about this method of cooking is that the excess oil drips to the bottom of the pan and it doesn't stay on your food. So I put about two tablespoons of the everything spice into a little jar. I like to season with my hands. Um, I feel like you can get more accurate and I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over the cauliflower. It doesn't, every piece of it doesn't have to be coated, but you kind of want to like evenly coat it. I like to also use my hands because I find that when you get in the habit of sprinkling it out of the jar, you'll sprinkle it out of the jar over the stove. And I think the steam that comes up into your spices can make them clump. The, these spices don't have any additives in them, so they're gonna clump on their own, they don't need any help. And then what I do is just turn the pieces over, the big pieces first. And I wanna season the other side. Sometimes halfway through cooking I turn them over, it just depends. I'm not, I can't say that I'm consistent. Um, and also I don't think it, it necessarily matters. Um, so yeah, I've turned them all over now. So I'm just going to drizzle them, not as much as the first time, but just a little bit more. And I'm going to sprinkle some more of the everything spice. And I'm going to put these on the grill. I'm gonna seal them in foil and cook them probably for like 15, 20 minutes um, so that they can kind of steam and soften. And then I'm gonna take the foil off and cook them probably for another 20 minutes with the, with the foil off. Um, I like to do the steam bit first because I feel like the food doesn't dry out. Sometimes when you roast vegetables, they can be like dry and rubbery. Um, but I feel like when you steam them first, you don't have that issue. So I'm going to put these on the grill of an indirect heat. If I were going to cook them in the oven, I would just put them in the oven at 400. I kind of cook everything on 400. So, um, I'll go put these on the grill and I'll be right back. So our cauliflower is on the grill. We have our zucchini cut up behind me. And I'm gonna move on to the butternut squash soup. Um, when you're cooking, always try to remember to cook the stuff that takes the longest first. So now while this stuff is cooking, I can grill the zucchini, or I can wait till closer to the time that I'm gonna be done. If I was serving for people, I would just time it, how long the zucchini takes five minutes to cook on each side or less sometimes, depending on how thick you cut it. So I know like that's 10 minutes so when I'll prepare my soup because that can sit, it's fine. And then the cauliflower, you kind of want to eat right away. So I would time everything around the cauliflower. Um, I do not like to peel butternut squash. It, it just makes me sad. So I am going to not peel it, but there are all sorts of ways to make this soup. So this is a vegan soup and it's, it's really, really easy. I'm gonna season the soup with the jerk seasoning. Um, and I'm gonna put this right on the grill with the cauliflower. And then I'm going to um, saute some onions and garlic in a pan. When this is done, I'm gonna put it into the pan, um, mix it all together, puree it, add some coconut milk, season it to taste and you have a soup that's really delicious. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. And to be honest, I don't even like dealing with butternut squash because it's so hard. But I deal with it because it's so delicious. So let's just cut that off because that wasn't cooperating. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna turn it around. 
Actually, I'm gonna cut it further in. Now, whatever works for you in terms of cutting this is fine. You just wanna be careful that you don't cut yourself. Like, see how hard this is? Ugh. That noise is like the noise. Yes. Woo, what a workout. Okay, so we have our butternut squash cut in half. And I'm just gonna scrape out all of this stuff. I find scraping it out with a spoon. Like, perfect, look at that. This is my little compost pile behind me. Um, I have a compost outside that I keep saying I'm gonna put in my garden, but I never do. But I just feel like at least I'm not adding this stuff to a landfill. I don't know that we have landfills, but. A little bit more in here so I don't know if you've ever done a pumpkin for Halloween this is what you spend all day doing it takes five minutes to carve the pumpkin and like the rest of the day to get the stuff out of it okay so I'm just gonna clean up so I'm just gonna drizzle this with a little bit of olive oil And I'm gonna brush it. Now I've put about two tablespoons of jerk in this bowl. You're not gonna need all of that. You can put as much or as little as you like, but don't forget that jerk is spicy. So I think the um, sweetness of the butternut squash and the coconut milk is such a beautiful contrast to the spiciness of the jerk. Sometimes I actually add the Middle Eastern into the soup as well because it's like you're adding that curry, kind of curryness to it and I think it's a great combination. But today we're just gonna do the jerk because I don't wanna make it too confusing. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this. And when you roast vegetables, that brings out their sweetness more so when you have something that's sweet like butternut squash roasted it it just makes it even sweeter okay so that's enough so if i were cooking this in the oven i would just put it on a cookie sheet and just check it in about 20 minutes um i'm gonna put this on the grill with the with the cauliflower um I'm gonna wrap it in foil, actually. Sometimes I wrap it in foil, sometimes I don't. Um, but I'm gonna wrap it in foil today because I think that might speed up the cooking a little bit. So I'm gonna get this sorted and I'll be right back. So I've got my zucchini laid out. I'm gonna grill it now. Um, I'm gonna drizzle it with olive oil um, and I'm gonna season it with the everything spice. So I just put a little bit on and I'll just brush it. I have about, I think you'll need probably about a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of the everything spice. Um, I've put a little bit in this bowl and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on with my hands. Zucchini has a lot of water in it, so that's why it's nice to grill it. You don't wanna grill it to the point where it gets mushy. Um, I like it to be a little bit I guess al dente um, when I take it off the grill. So, because if you grill it, if it turns into mush, it just, I don't know, it's not great. I mean, if you do overcook it, it doesn't, I don't really think it affects the taste, but because I'm a texture person and I think like texture is part of taste, I don't like to overcook it. So I'm gonna cook this on a preheated cast iron grill pan. Um, I love my cast iron pans. Every year I ask for 
something cast iron for Christmas and nobody ever buys me cast iron so I buy myself a piece maybe once a year um, so I'm just gonna heat this up and I'll get right back to you when it's on the pan so these have been on about three minutes now and I'm just gonna turn them over I set a timer for five minutes um, sometimes they take a little bit longer sometimes they take a little bit shorter it just depends on how thick you cut them um, but you want to get the grill marks some of these are not cooperating with the grill marks but that's fine um, I always set a timer when I cook because it's just so easy to lose track of how long something's been on So my zucchini's done, and doesn't it look delicious? So one thing I always do is plate my food. I just think it, it's just such a nice feeling to have food that's presented beautifully. Obviously you don't have to plate your food, but I think if you start to do it, you'll see what I mean. Um, so I ended up cooking these for five minutes. So just to give you an idea, based on that thickness, it took them five minutes to cook. Um, three minutes on the first side, two minutes on the second side. If you don't have a grill pan, try this recipe anyway. I would say if you don't have a grill pan, don't move. I mean, you shouldn't move the zucchini anyway for the first three minutes, but just be careful about moving it and it not being sealed yet and creating a mess in your pan. Like let it get a nice toast on the outside before you turn it over. Um, yeah, grilled zucchini. Good luck, send me a picture. So the cauliflower is all done. I could dry it out a little bit more than this and it still be really delicious, but it's not necessary. So I just like it to have a light crisp to it um, the bottom will be a little bit toasted because it's been over the heat and it gives it a really nice effect. So I'm just plating it. And this dish doesn't seem like a blow your mind dish, but it actually is. See the little bit of char in? I don't know if you can see it on the bottom. It's one of those dishes that is surprisingly good. And you have to scrape all the bits out of the pan because they're surprisingly good as well. And so this is a nice dish for entertaining as well because people are always amazed at how good the cauliflower tastes. So we have our plated cauliflower. And now we're gonna finish up with the butternut squash soup. I've just taken my squash off of the grill um, and opened it up. Usually I open it up part way through cooking. Um, I totally forgot today, uh, but it'll be fine. So they have juice in them and I'm just gonna make sure that when I put it in the pan, I put all this juice in the pan with it. So I'm gonna chop up my onions and garlic and just start to saute those in the pan. So I've started chopping my onion. You don't have to be overly concerned with how you chop it because we're gonna puree it anyway, but you just wanna cut it in half, slice it that way, and then just cut it this way. Make sure you keep your fingers out of the way and make sure you use a sharp, straight edge knife. And just take off the bits. So that's our onion. Um, and I'm gonna use two cloves of garlic. These cloves are pretty big, so I'm just gonna use two cloves. And the thing about getting the garlic skin off, I find the easiest way to get it off is cut it down the middle and then cut the ends off and it comes off. I was gonna say, just cause I'm saying it's easy, it's not, but yeah, it comes right off. Most times it just pops right out. And then I'll chop my garlic as well. And I'm gonna mince it, but 
Also, it doesn't have to be perfectly minced because all of this is getting pureed. So I usually just slice it first to get it into choppable pieces and then start to chop it. Then we're gonna start sauteing this and while it's sauteing, I'm gonna scoop the squash out of its skin. out of the skin I mean this is probably messier than peeling but it's definitely easier just try to make sure you're not putting skin skin in the bowl Now I could saute, um, blend this now and puree it now, but because I want my onions and garlic pureed as well, I usually just mix them all in together and puree it all together. So I've added my, my squash to the pan and I'm just simmering it. I'll probably simmer it with the top on for about 10 minutes just so the flavors can come together and then I'm going to move to the blender. I like to have a little bit of liquid in it before I put it in the blender just because it blends better, like it doesn't get stuck. Um, so yeah, we'll be right back with that. So I have everything from the pot in the blender now. Remember, you, you're dealing with hot, a hot liquid, so you don't want to fill the blender right up to the top. Um, you just want to be very careful. You don't want to get burned, and you don't want it to come out of the top. What I usually do is I loosen the middle part of the blender so that the hot air can escape. Um, I don't take it completely off, but I just like open it up a little just so that it's not sealed. It's nice and smooth now. Everything's gonna go back into the pot and we're gonna add another tin of coconut milk. So this is the part of the recipe where your judgment really comes in. With two cups of coconut milk, it's a nice consistency and it really just depends on how thick or thin you want your soup. I like mine's probably to be a little bit thinner, so I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of water today. Sometimes I use vegetable stock, sometimes I use chicken stock when I'm not telling people that it's vegan. Um, I'm going to taste it as well. I've already tasted it actually, it's delicious, but um, I feel like it could use a little bit more jerk seasoning. Just because I like it to have a little kick, it's very sweet right now, and um, I feel like this, the spicy will be nice with it. But you you taste yours and decide whether, I mean, maybe it, yours needs a little bit of salt, or maybe it doesn't need anything. Just taste it and decide. So this is the finished pumpkin soup, butternut squash soup. Um, and one of the things I really like about it is the sweetness of the butternut squash mixed with the coconut milk means that you don't have to add any sugar. Um, if pumpkin or butternut squash is not your thing, just remember you can use the jerk on chicken, you can use it on other vegetables, you can use it on um, potatoes if you like. So try it out and let me know what you think. Send me your questions.